All right, everyone. So in today's episode, we are going to talk about the dead cat bounce. Now, this little guy's name is Rambo. He's got nine lives. So he's taken some hard falls, but he always keeps going. So what is the dead cat bounce? Well, we have a picture perfect example of it today. Uh, today was a great day. I'm sitting at uh, $12,998.44, and the bulk of that profit, 90% of it, uh, 11000 was on Meg L. And this was a dead cat bounce, which was on the watch list. I actually put it on the watch list yesterday as something we wanted to watch for a possible dead cat bounce. So what is the dead cat bounce? Well, uh, essentially on this stock, we had a move on the IPO from $49 a share all the way up to 200 50 bucks and then all the way back down here to a low of uh, I think the low was pre-market it was a little below eight dollars so the whole idea with the dead cat bounce is something drops so fast that because it's so extreme it snaps and bounces back off the low so if we actually zoomed in here what you would see is that when Rambo falls from a tree He's diving and avoiding a, a you know a, a missile. He lands on his feet and then springs back up just a little bit. He's so limber like that. So this little bounce here, now you want to get real zoomed in. That's the bounce. So it's a hard fall and ooh, right back up like that. Now it's not a big bounce. We never expect this to go back to the highs. Never. This is just a bounce off the low. That's all it is. But that's a strong pattern for a day trade. And I mean, you could even swing trade it, but I really focus on this as a uh, as a day trading pattern. Okay, so, um, and I see, uh, by the way, Chris posting his P&L there. Um, Chris, $21,543. Impressive, very good. So uh, the student... Uh, excelling and beating the teacher today. I'm, I'm happy. That's great. Great to see. Okay, so Meg L, we can dive into the reasons um, why the stock fell. And to a certain extent, it matters. Um, but on the other hand, this is a very technical setup. You have a, a really quick fall, and then you have the spring back up off the low. So, you know, the, the whole idea with this one is that we've seen in the last few weeks these crazy IPOs where a stock IPOs and goes way, way up and then comes all the way back down. And we had it on ILAG, I-L-A-G. And this one sold off, uh, it IPO'd, went up to $26 a share, sold off really hard. And then this gave us a dead cat bounce on this candle right here. So on that day, we traded it for dead cat bounce. And the, the setup is the first daily candle to go green after that really strong sell-off. And then I'll show you the intraday entry. Now this ended up giving some additional bounces on this day here and a little bit on these two days here, which as it was curling back up, it still has a lot of potential for a move higher. You know, the high of this candle was 438. The high of this candle here was 578. You know, and then you start to get into this big red candle. So on the daily chart, we would sort of say, well, this doesn't really have a lot of resistance, um, you know, on this particular day, back up to like 2640. But what's the reason, what's the fundamental reason that's going to allow it to do more than just the bounce off the low and actually put in a big move? There's probably some statistics on um, these types of sell-offs in terms of like really big sell-off and then first daily candle come up how much you should expect for a dead cat bounce off the low. Some people might use like a Fibonacci retracement or something like that. For me, generally, what I was thinking today is that this had the potential to go up 100% off of this price here. That's what I said. I said, I think this equal, e e uh, easily has the potential to go up 100% and that was when it was at $8. So let's check the high intraday on, um, on Meg L. And you'll see that the high intraday uh, today is 1787. So we exceeded a 100% intraday bounce. Now this is one where you, you might have it on watch for a couple of days, which I did. So last week we had the day where it dropped from 249 to 86. And I was like, okay. And I saw some people talking about a bounce. I was like, yeah, you could. But the problem on this stock 
was that the IPO price, the stock IPOs, uh, well, it. so this is a little confusing. You see the open is $50, but when the company sold shares, and I wanna say they sold like 5 million shares or something like that, 4 million shares at like $5 a share, they raised like $20 million. So they sold their shares, the IPO price was like four or $5 a share. It was very low. So that's the price the company got for selling shares. And then by the time the stock actually opens, it was so hyped up that traders were already willing to pay $50 a share for it, which was pretty irrational. It ends up going up high and then selling off. So I was kind of like, let's wait for it to come down a little closer to its IPO price, because I think even at this level, it's um, it's still too high. So uh, just for reference, there's a um, NASDAQ IPO calendar that you could look at if you're if you're particularly interested. But uh, let's see. So Meg L IPO'd at four dollars. It was five million shares, which means the company raised twenty million dollars. And they must feel so silly, uh, disappointed in a way, because they sold five million shares at four dollars a share, only to watch the stock go all the way to two fifty. <laughs> I mean, think about that. That's that's kind of insane. Um, how much money they left on the table? But you know, at the time, they had no way of knowing how hyped up it would be, and this sometimes happens. So. Anyways, uh, I was kind of looking for it to come back down closer to that $5 level. And that's more similar to where we got the bounce on ILAG and where we've had the bounce on some of these others. Uh, HKD right now is another one um, that is coming back down. And although you did get a little bounce already on it, it still has a lot of room to keep coming down. It went way crazy high. Okay, so let's look at Meg L. All right, so on this one, um, so, for the last few days, I've had it on the watch list because I it was a stock that had made a big move recently, so I keep these on my uh, watch list. And I said, okay, well, uh, after we had that really small red day here, I actually thought we might have a bounce on it. And on that day, this had a low of 10 and a high of 14.20. And I was watching it for a possible dead cat bounce. And I might have even traded it that day. I, I can't quite remember now. Um, I did trade it one of these days in this area. So let's look back at the chart. All right, so the chart for the first day. So this this was the day where we had this crazy sell-off. You know, these were the two days of crazy sell-off. We're looking at the one-minute chart. So this thing is just selling off really hard. And then here, we started to get dialed in because I started to think that it looked like it was basing out um, around this level. So we actually did trade it um, on this day right in here. This is where you were starting to get some dead cat bounce opportunities. This was after hours. So you had this strong sell off. It sort of double bottomed at around 12. And then there was a little bit of resistance here at about 13. And so this was a break of this channel right here. And that gave you a move from 13 up to 15, a little pullback and a nice bounce up to 17. So that right there, is a dead cat bounce. That was after the big sell-off, and that's a nice bounce. I mean, l listen, from 12 up to $17 a share, that's five points. That's a great bounce. You can't complain about that. So after hours closes, um, eight o'clock, right? And then the next morning at 4 a.m., it pops up a little bit pre-market. It sells off a bit more. And then I took this trade the next day as it broke through volume-weighted average price. This was a breakthrough. It broke through 1350, and we got a squeeze on this up to about um, 1631. So it was about three dollars a share, not bad. And the level I was watching here, I was saying, you know what? We're looking at this as being support off of about 12 because it's held that level, and I want to see if it can break through after hours high there of like 17. And you know what? It wasn't able to do it. It sold off a little bit more, but not a lot more. It still held right around $12. Okay, so then the next day, we got uh, another little opportunity on it in this area. I don't remember if I traded this, but it kind of broke out a little above 12, came back down, didn't wasn't really quite ready to go. All right, but still on watch, still keeping it on watch. And then here we go. So then we've got this pullback on uh, Friday. So that was um, yesterday. Well, obviously not yesterday, but that was the last trading day. It pulls back down, hits a low of about 780. 
Now this morning, this was really interesting. I had it on watch um, last night when I did my uh, Sunday night game plan for the week ahead. And I said, you know, it's on watch for first daily candle to make a new high. So that means we're watching it uh, at this point, potentially over yesterday's high, or Friday's high, which was 1030, the first candle to go green. Now, then we have 1197 and then we have 1420. And if we break over 1420, I mean, this thing could bounce to $20 a share. So realistically, I think it has the potential to bounce up about 100%. If it, but when it bounces, and I don't know when it's going to happen, I'm just going to keep it on watch. So this morning, I sat down and looked at it pretty early. And when I looked at it in this area, you know what I noticed? On the level two, it pops up here. And I was like, okay, that's a nice pop. And then I noticed on the level two, a 45,000 share seller. And I thought, a 45,000 share seller? That's a pretty big sell order for this stock, considering there wasn't a lot of volume. Who's already putting out a 45,000 share sell order? I mean, the fact is, it, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me because that sell order is all of, you know, 80, uh, no, let's see, the low was 760. The sell order is like 60 cents off the lows. So who's selling 45,000 shares 60 cents off the lows? I mean, at, at a certain point, if you're really holding that kind of big position, you, you might as well keep holding it. I don't know. I mean, why sell it there? Um, if you're selling to go short, you already missed the huge move down. So why are you going short at that level? So I don't really understand it, but I saw it and I was like, well, in any case, there's a big seller on the level two. So while I like, and, and this is very important because I like the daily chart, the daily chart's great, but I don't know when it's going to start bouncing. Maybe it's today, maybe it's tomorrow because I've been watching it for three days. So daily chart's good. Okay. Intraday chart on the five minute. It looks good. It looks like it bottomed out and now it's starting to curl back up. But now my final decision before taking the trade, I'm looking at the level two. And when I pull up the level two window and I see that seller there at 820, 45,000 shares, I'm thinking, well, wait a second. You know, now sort of my final, um, you know, my final review before I can press that buy button isn't passing. There's a big seller blocking the way. And this to me is why it is really important, of course, to use level two in your trading. Because if you don't, you could be end up buying right into a huge wall that doesn't break. So in this case, I said, you know, it's on watch. Let's put it on a side chart. It's still a dead cat bounce setup, uh, but I don't know when it's gonna go. So it's just a maybe. So in the meantime, I took some other trades, AMPG, we had breaking news on that, V traded that one, um, whatever. So I took a couple other trades and then I, I still had the level two up and all of a sudden I look over and we can look at the one minute chart here. All of a sudden I look over and um, I see it's at, uh, the, the, the seller broke and it's at like whatever it was, um, 830 on the level two. So someone bought 45,000 shares. Basically, that's what happened. Someone pressed the buy button for you know a, a big, big order, 45,000 shares. So you see there's a volume spike there, 40,000 shares, as that buy order was bought up. Uh, and then the stock breaks that price. So because I already had it on watch, I pressed the buy button pretty much immediately. And I bought 1,000 shares at 838. That was my best entry, $8.38. That's not bad. That's about 18 cents, uh, a bit of an, a little bit of a chase, 18 cent chase versus the break of uh, 820. But you know, that's fine. I end up adding at 850, adding at 860, and I said I'm going to add uh, at 875, 885 for the move up to nine, and I'm not going to sell it until we get the break of nine. So I didn't sell any of it until we got this break of nine. So we get this squeeze up to $9. And I said, my first target on this for the dead cat bounce setup is $10.30. Now it doesn't mean I'm not gonna take profit along the way, but this stock has to break 1030. Otherwise, when it opens, it's not necessarily gonna be making a new high. And we need it not just to be green, but to be making a new high. And so this ends up um, having an, a very nice move here. Uh, hits a high of 925, does a proper one minute pullback right here, then goes up to 950, up to 980, up to 10. Micro pullback, hits a high of 1008, market opens, and this thing pops up as you can see here, we end up squeezing to a high of um, 1019. 
So we do move a little bit higher, but at the open, a little choppy. We end up actually going red. We sell off here. Um, I don't think it halted down. No, it just sold off a little bit. And so at that moment, this was sort of the moment of truth. We were below the 1030 trigger on the daily to create confirmation of first candle to make a new high. And because the open uh, of the day was at 979 and we were down here at 925, the candle was red. So remember, you can have a gap up, but the candle's red because we, as traders, we color the candle versus the open price. So it pulls back here and then, whoa, there we go. Break a VWAP, squeeze up through 11, and now it's game time. We got the move on this. And so now we've got daily confirmation. All right, our first daily candles made a new high. That was at 1030. We now have room to 1197, the high of this candle. If we break 1197, we've got room to 1420, the high of this candle. And if we break 1420, we've just got a lot of room. So no real resistance, we could keep going. And this is where you see that we just continued to go higher. And I traded it through this whole range. I was getting in, getting out, buying breakouts. We had a ton of really great setups. I did a ton of dip trades. We had some really nice dip opportunities where it would dip down to the half dollar, bounce back up to the next whole dollar. It just really clean action. Another dip off the half dollar, pop back up to 1150. This one really respected half dollars and whole dollars. Um, at the end of this recap, I'll give you a link to this indicator here that I'm using right now to help me avoid false breakouts. We had a couple. There was a false breakout right there, as you can see. Um, it then comes back up and rips through the high, 1150, and this thing is just super strong. Front side of the move, clean five minute chart. We're looking at the one minute, but the five minute chart was super clean and it just kept going. So this was a very nice dead cat bounce. They're not always this clean. Uh, this was a particularly clean one. And so I, I traded it well. I'm happy with how, how we did on it. And I think that we should keep this pattern. This is just a great example of the pattern and we should keep it on a close watch. Obviously I'll uh, grab screenshots of this and add it to the chapter dedicated to dead cat bounces that's part of the uh, Warrior Pro curriculum. This isn't, of course, the first time I'm sure you've ever heard me mention dead cat bounce. It's a, it's a pattern that we've traded uh, for a long time, active day traders, um, the collective we. So 1541, then it breaks that level, squeezes up to a high, tops out there on a topping tail at 1787. Then we get a sharp pullback below the 20 moving average, starts to look like a head and shoulders pattern and ends up coming back up here uh, for a second off of this ascending support line before breaking down. So, you know, this is where it sits right now. I am very happy with where I sit on the day. I don't wanna overstay my welcome. I got green, I'm at twice the daily goal, over twice the daily goal. And one of the things that I mentioned earlier today, or actually I mentioned it yesterday when I was talking about the game plan, in terms of psychology, um, one of the things that I was really thinking closely about was it's the beginning of the week, today's Monday. I wanna start the week in the green. So first trade has to be high probability, a trade, a setup that I think looks really good and try to get 20, 30 cents a share. The reality is 20 cents a share per share per day. That is the difference between success and failure as a trader. If you can get 20 cents a day consistently, you're green. If you can't, I mean, it's, you could get 10 cents, you get 30, but it, it comes down to such a small margin. And it's so easy for traders to lose sight of this. Um, and you know, look, look, 10 cents a day is fine. Uh, 20 cents, it doesn't really matter. It's just the, the whole point is keeping, keeping kind of perspective here that what you're looking for is a couple of base hits. And so I start the day looking for one good quality trade, a trade that I think has the potential to give 30, 40, 50 cents per share. And if it ends up working, then maybe I'll capture half of that because you never capture the whole thing. If it doesn't work, I should still at least have some room to get five to 10 cents, a small base hit, and hopefully I can avoid a loss. Or if it does turn into a loss, it's a really small loss. So the first goal of the day is finding that one trade that I have high conviction that I can get 20 to 30 cents a share out of. Uh, today, the dead cat bounce was the pattern that gave us the most, um, the most room, and it gave us a ton of really good setups on the one minute and the five minute chart. 
So just clean action today, some good good trading, and I hope this is helpful for people that are um, curious about the dead cat bounce pattern because it's a pattern that you will continue to see in the market after you see these really extreme moves. We trade the moves up, uh, or sometimes you miss the move up, and if you do, you can trade the move down to the short side, and then you could trade the bounce off the low back to the long side. So you could trade these both long and short. There's a lot of opportunity here, and. I hope this episode has been helpful. So I'll put a couple links to um, to other videos uh, right here and right here that I think folks watching this as a recap might enjoy. So check those.